Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and today I got a little tutorial for you. We're going to show you how to install the Budgie desktop on Ubuntu based distributions. Now let me go and drag over Firefox here. Now the Budgie desktop it is part of the currently being developed uh, Evolve OS. And I've got Evolve OS's uh, their website right here. Talks a little bit about the uh, about the distribution. And the uh, I believe it's under about is that where it is? Yeah, there we go. Under about we can read a little bit about the Budgie desktop here. Uh, and here it says the flagship desktop of the Solus operating system uh, is tightly integrated with the GNOME stack and basically what they've done is you know they've they've used the existing GNOME stack um, and just kind of repurposed it to create their own uh, desktop environment and so it's a little bit different than a fork in that they're not taking the GNOME stack and, and changing it as, you know, much as, uh, say, Cinnamon is a fork of, of the older GNOME 2, and so is Mate. They are forks in that they've taken that original code and tweaked it and modified it. This is a little bit different. They're using the existing GNOME stack. They're not rewriting it. They're just using it in a different way. I, I guess that's the easiest way to explain it. Um, and so to that effect... You know, I kind of like to check it out. Um, granted, I know it's not going to be the same as the standard uh, GNOME 3 experience, but I like to see what it's about. Uh, so, I am uh, right now. I am running right here a installation of uh, Ubuntu GNOME 14.04, and we're going to install Budgie on on this distribution. Now, uh, I will point out, and right here is the Evolve OS PPA. And kind of scrolling down here, I've noticed that they have not updated it yet for the 1504 series. So what I'm about to show you, it will work for the, any, a distribution using the 1410 series. And it will work for anything using the 1404 series. Uh, and, uh, and actually, Budgie can be installed in some other uh, other. Uh, uh, distributions. Uh, I know it's in Arch. I'm not sure whether I think it's in the Arch user repositories. Um, and actually come back to the to the, their page here. If you scroll down, yeah, it talks a little bit about the various distributions that it can be installed on. OpenSUSE, Fedora, it's in the AUR for Arch, and then the Ubuntu PPAs. Now I will tell you that uh, uh, it has not been updated to uh, to function correctly with GNOME 3.16. It's still running uh, functions with the GNOME 3.14 stack, which in the case of Ubuntu, that's not going to be an issue because even on uh, Ubuntu 15.04, they're still not up to GNOME 3.16. That, you know, that distribution is up to GNOME 3.14. So not an issue on that but actually installing this is not going to be that difficult well, let's go and open our terminal and I will leave instructions on how to do this down below in the video description and let me come over here to my notes alright first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add that Evolve PPA and our password. And then we're going to need to do sudo apt-get update. I'll let that do its thing.
and we're going to now paste in sudo apt-get install budgie desktop and we'll let that install we'll select yes let that install and then after that we will simply need to um, either log out and log back in under the new uh, using the new uh, desktop environment or actually uh, you know what I usually do is I'll reboot after installing a new desktop environment and then you know uh, and then when I log back in use the new desktop environment so click yes and I will pause the video and uh, when we come back we'll take a look around the budgie desktop okay we are back budgie is installed and running and uh, as you can see we got a bottom panel now just to give you a heads up I have not tweak the looks or anything like that at all um, you know this is just basically the default look of uh, what you're going to get with budgie if you install it so um, once again we got a bottom panel here mostly transparent except where we got an icon popping up or that we've got a menu over here on the left hand side you click on that my one gripe is going to be that this is transparent um, and uh, depending on your background that might cause you some problems and uh, anyway we've got our tray icons right there over on this side we've got our time and date pop-up calendar now you can't really see it that well uh, but since I've got uh, dual monitor set up the uh, the calendar right here it's kind of you know uh, half on one monitor and half on another I don't know if that would be fixed if I was just using a single monitor um, you know not really sure on that part of things uh, we got our volume control here notifications right here and uh, language right there and of course that little thing right there is just from my screen recorder running now if you go over here to the menu and right click it you can go to preferences and there's a whole lot of little tweaking that well not a huge amount but a fair amount of tweaking that you can do uh, you can move the placement around um, there you got you know here list all of the icons that I uh, or not icons but applets that are currently installed there are others available if you just click this plus there's not a whole lot available right now um, but there's a few so you can go and tweak the uh, tweak your panel as well as change the order and also you can change the positioning a little bit so like uh, you know for my clock issue over there maybe I would go and yeah we'll move it over a bit and I still need more to get it all on yeah that ends up moving it over a lot so that it would fit probably the better thing to do let's run it back down to zero and yeah let's move it over see if that uh, works out better yeah that works out better so anyway you can go and do those kinds of tweaks and and whatnot come here to panel you can change the position of the panel you can move it up to the top if you like personally that is where I would go with it um, yeah, you can change the icon size go to left right that sort of thing known panel theme integration let's see what that does and how oh, that that does integrate that but, uh, still got the the transparent background on that so uh, that really doesn't help me out with what I, I was looking for uh, you can enable or disable a dark theme right here and if you want to do an auto hide you can do an auto hide and then on the menu right now it's using the compact menu layout which is you know just a simple drop down if you turn that off you get something that's more like uh, I don't know it's similar to the whisker menu in uh, in XFCE you still got a search function in it which I like having a search function 
uh, integrated into that. So if I was looking for Firefox, just start typing and boom, Firefox will pop up. So personally, what I would probably, if I was going to use this as my desktop, since I'm so used to the way uh, GNOME 3 is set up, I would go and hotkey this menu, assuming that it's possible. Hotkey that, uh, that menu to the uh, window or super key. Um, just, you know, kind of the way my, my brain's wired. But there's the compact view again. You can also show uh, category headers in the menu. So put that on, and now you can see it categorizes things for you. Uh, you can tweak the icon size. Do you want them, uh, and then what do you want the menu label to be? Do you want a menu label on the panel? All that kind of stuff. Now I installed a few themes, trying to see if I could theme this better. One so so that I could get a background in here. But to be perfectly honest, none of it really looked good. Let me go and open the tweak tool. And I see it's still. I'm still running the default Adwata uh, uh, theme, and uh, I've got the global dark theme enabled. Go on and changing, and you see I, I installed a bunch of different uh, uh, themes here, and changing the window thing that doesn't change that much. It really doesn't change anything on the panel and whatnot. And let me go and open up uh, something. Um, there we go, we'll open up our text editor. And so, you know, you get the, the different, the theming on there. Um, but by, if you come here to the GTK th theme and go to, let's try the GNOME Cooper Inc. Um, you know, that looks all out of place. And, you know, that just sucks with the look right there. I don't know any other word for it. And I tried the same thing. This one basically ended up with the same thing. And Gnomish Gray was the same deal. Zukidua, I guess is how you pronounce that one. Let's see what that does. It, that's even harder to read. Yeah, let's try this one. Nope. So none of the themes really look good, which is kind of a bummer. Um, other issues I ran into, there's something of a lag here when you click on the menu. Um, it's not real bad, but it's noticeable enough to annoy me. Uh, and then, of course, like I said, the, the, the transparency here. Um, you know, if I had a white background, it caused real problems. Uh, hopefully, switching off of the uh, off of the global dark would help that. Um, but it, it's still, you know, I, I still don't like that completely transparent thing. Um, I would like something in the preferences to be able to go and tweak that. So anyway, ran into that, and. For whatever reason, I'm having no trouble with with the main monitor here that I am um, that I'm using to record, but over here on my other uh, uh, monitor, I am getting Buku screen tearing and just all kinds of graphics issues. Um, so I'm not quite sure why that is. It's, whatever's going on it's just not playing nice with that second monitor I don't know maybe budgie uh, you know they've never they have not designed it to be able to handle a second monitor so not sure about that uh, memory use uh, I figured a lot of people want to know about that both memory and CPU it's roughly equivalent to running uh, gnome 3 desktop um, baseline I was running 375 400 megs of RAM um, more once I started, you know, open up applications and that sort of thing. But baseline, you know, 375, 400, uh, which is roughly about what I get on my system uh, when I first start up uh, GNOME. So, you know, essentially no difference. So for all the talk about it being a light desktop, 
it's not. It's at least in the current state, it's about the same as GNOME 3, which is to be expected since it is basically using the GNOME stack and, you know, same libraries and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Give us a big old thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, questions, comments, all that kind of stuff down below. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Love to have you following us. And uh, on that note, I will see you all on the next video. Thanks a lot.